Well, good morning and welcome to Worship Online this Sunday, July the 10th. We are really glad that you are with us um, it, online. It, it would love to have you in person, but um, we're glad you are joining us. And we pray that today all of us can worship God in spirit and in truth together. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksika, the Kanai, the Pekani, the Sutina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. We also reaffirm our pledge to stand for justice and our commitment that our church is a place where all people, regardless of race, culture, sexuality, or faith are welcome. And together we hope that we can all find the true love of God and authentic community. Our call to worship this morning. Who is the God whom we have come to worship? God is the creator of all. The creator of the birds and trees, wind and sea, God is the creator of all things seen and unseen. Then let us worship the God of creation, the God of all things, great and small. Let's pray. Creator God, you made all that is, both seen and unseen. You made us in your image, both male and female, that we might reflect your goodness, wisdom, and love. And as we gather around your word and table this day, may our faith be renewed that we may serve you. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture this morning is one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 8. I'm reading from the New International Version, Psalm 8. Lord, or our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and all herds, the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, all that swim in the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. As you can probably guess, our theme for today is centers around creation. And now I would like to invite us to spend a little time in prayer together. Um, again, it's centered somewhat around creation. Let us pray. God of all creation, on the first day you made day and night. Forgive us for taking for granted the dependable patterns of your world. Open our eyes to see the beauty of the cosmos you created as our home. On the second day, you made the sky. Forgive us for polluting the air. Help us to see how best to restore and renew your creation. On the third day, you made the seas and plants. Forgive us for spoiling the seas. Give us resolve to change our hurtful habits. On the fourth day, you made the sun and the moon. Forgive us for failing to pause in pr praise of their splendor. Open our lips so that we will sing your praise. On the fifth day, you made swarms of living creatures. Forgive us for seeing their value only in terms of our serving our interests. Give us new opportunities to delight in their beauty and diversity. On the sixth day, you made humankind in your image. Forgive us for denying dignity to all your people. 
work through us until all know their worth as your beloved creatures. On the seventh day, you rested. Forgive us for failing to take joy in our rest. Help us to enter your rhythm of rest, even in this day of worship. Father, we confess to you these sins and so many more. And we ask for your forgiveness through Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Lord, you make a pink flower from a gray seed, an ear from a kernel, a carrot from a seed the size of a pinhead, an oak tree from an acorn. You have programmed your soil to provide food for your plants, wooden trees to make apples, feathered hens to lay eggs, grass-eating cows to give milk. And you, grand creator, you have us take care of your grand creation. In your mercy, Lord, send rain to water our crops and gardens. Let your sun shine in our fields so that seeds will produce abundantly, so that vines and stalks and trees will hang heavy with fruit and grain. And Lord, let your grace be as rich to our cattle as it is to us. Let us keep our hogs free from disease. Our hens laying eggs and our cows giving milk. May our animals be fertile. May our lambs and calves and pigs frolic in your green pasture, so that even in their play, we may see your grace. Help us to live on your good earth, preserving and caring for the life and soil you bless. Ever thankful for our good, you gave your laws of nature and your law of love. Help us for our good and your glory to see those laws as you see them, and as the psalmist saw them, as good and perfect, pleasant to think about. And Lord, teach us to share the abundance you have given us, never gloating in our excess, but always giving our first bushels to feed the hungry in your name. Enlighten our hearts, O Lord, so that our thank yous ever rise in a crescendo to your throne. We pray this morning for those around the earth who are struggling to have enough to eat, to have a place to live. We pray for those who long for your touch, and your love, and your grace and mercy. Use us, we pray. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this morning in our church uh, service, it, it is Cottage Church for the summer, which is a much more informal kind of um, service and a little bit more conversational but that makes it rather hard to do online because it's harder to have a conversation with you. But I want us to try. So I encourage you to talk to me, even though I'm ne not necessarily going to uh, hear what you have to say. God will and you will. And so um, Cottage Church for this summer, the theme is based on creation calls. We're going to talk about all things of creation and our theme song, which is in the playlist that accompanied the links to this, um, the one of the songs that we will sing every week all summer so that it's in your head is the song Creation Calls. I have felt the wind blow whispering your name. I have seen your tears fall when I watch the rain. How could I say there is no God when all around creation calls? A singing bird a mighty tree, the vast expanse of open sea. Gazing at a bird in flight, soaring through the air, 
Lying down beneath the stars, I feel your presence there. I love to stand at ocean shore and feel the thundering breakers roar, to walk through golden fields of green, neath endless blue horizons frame. Listening to the river run, watering the earth, the fragrance of a rose in bloom, a newborn's cry at birth. How can I say there is no God when all around creation calls? A singing bird, a mighty tree, the vast expanse of open sea. I believe. And I pray that you do believe. It's a wonderful song that gives a framework for what we're going to be talking about this summer. We've talked about creation before and we're going to continue to talk about creation because there's so much to explore. Creation is good. We're not going to take the time to read through Genesis 1, but I would like to encourage you to take that time sometime today and read through and note how every day after God has created the things on that day, he says, and God saw that it was good. I've actually enjoyed reading the message, um, Genesis 1 in the message this time, uh, because a different translation from what we usually use gives some added meaning or clarity to certain things. And I've certainly found that to be true in this section. Creation is God's creation. And it is designed to speak to us of God. It is designed to exist to honor God and to give him the glory. And we, each one of us, are an important part of that creation, aren't we? I know I've said before, when I watch the movie Australia, and I know I don't watch very many movies, but that one continues to remind me because the young boy say, said to um, his surrogate adoptive mother, I'll call you to me, mom. And that's what I believe that creation does for us. It calls us to God. More recently in the movie Frozen, which most children have watched, um, it's Elsa that hears the little song, ah. and I actually have two granddaughters who a couple summers ago were singing that across, across their big yard. They would sing it from one end to the other, and one would sing that and the other would answer. But it was a call of something, to Elsa, and I believe that God calls us like that. The question is, do we listen? Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear God calling to you? Do you hear him in the running water or at the ocean when you hear the crashing waves? Is he calling you? Do you hear him? Do you see him in the birds as they fly, the eagle, the bears, the animals of nature? What do you think of when you gaze at the stars or take in the breathtaking view of the majestic mountains? Do you feel him as you lay in the warm sand or fresh meadow? Do you taste him in the wild strawberries or fresh picked asparagus or all the other bountiful goodness of God's nature? Do you smell him in the fresh blooming flowers? And oh my goodness, it was wonderful to smell the lilacs more recently. And the um, on the weekend in the mountains when we were camping, the wonderful Alberta rose smells all around us. Or in the smell of the rain. I actually really love the smell of the rain. God is calling in every sense that we have. Do we hear him in creation? Do we see him in creation? Do we taste him? Do we smell him? Do we feel him? God has a real sense of humor. I mean, he had to have to create the platypus or the red-lipped batfish. Have you ever seen one? It's crazy. Or a parrotfish even. I could go on with all the funny things that um, in nature God has created. And he does have a good sense of humor doesn't he? 
I mean, he created us with a sense of humor and we are made in his likeness. I mean, who else but God could have created durian, which smells horrid but tastes good? Who else can give us the promise in the rainbow after the storm? Creation calls to each one of us in so many ways. What are some of the favorite ways God's creation speaks to you? And how do you respond? In creation, we find healing and restoration and renewal and recentering and all those kinds of things in creation. During COVID, the earth started to heal and regenerate and restore. It's amazing what God has created. And this summer, as we work through all of this, I want to invite you to do a word search in your Bible and discover all the verses that talk about the theme of the week. In our cottage church, our in-person in formal worship times on Sundays, that's what we'll be doing. This week, the word is creation. Next week, it will be wind, and then rocks, etc. You get the idea. I have found 24 verses with the word creation. Not all, or that doesn't include any of the ones in Genesis, because there's so many there. But I won't read them all to you this morning. But I do want to look at just a few and think just for a moment what that is saying to us. And what is your favorite one? Psalm 96, 13 says, Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord. That's what we long to do and need to do. Matthew 25, verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. God has an inheritance for you and I who trust in him and love him and walk in him with a daily relationship. And that inheritance has been there since he created the world. Mark 10, 6. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Isn't it wonderful to know that he created each one of us unique, loved, and special? Every person. Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. It makes me sad to think that there are still people in our world who have never heard of the love and salvation of Jesus Christ. And we need to take these verses so much more seriously. John 17, 24, Jesus says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Before the creation of the world, Jesus existed as part of the triune God and before the creation of the world, loved you and me. Romans 1.20 For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. And so while there are people in the world that have not heard of the love and salvation of Jesus Christ, if they look around, God will show them that he does exist and then he will use his creation to draw them close to him. Romans 8, 19 to 22 says, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. 
We know that the whole creation has been growing as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. So many verses about how since the beginning of creation, God has loved us and wants us to be a part of all of that. 2 Corinthians 15 and Galatians 6, 11 and 15 both talk about the fact that if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. God works inside us to help us to become the men and women of God that he has created us to be. Ephesians 1, 4, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Hebrews 4, 13, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. And finally, Romans 8, 39, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We are an important part, each one of us, of God's creation. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you acknowledging that we are a blessed part of your creation. We thank you. We thank you for allowing us to know that, to hear it, see it, taste it, feel it, smell it. We are so grateful. Amen. It is communion this week, as we did not have a chance to do it last week, as I was away and others were away, so we decided to postpone it for a week. And I invite you to take the cup and uh, a bread or cracker as we celebrate communion together. I found an interesting song the other day when I was, I actually Googled, um, Creation and Communion, and found this delightful song that is again in your playlist, but I'm going to read the words to it because it's something I actually had never really thought about. And so I had to stop and think about how creation and communion are so intricately um, connected. This is Meal of Creation by Richard Bruxvort Colligan. Bread from the ripe fields of the land, juice from the grapes of the vine, taste of our common story of struggle, taste of communion and new life. Meal of creation, sing all together the song of the earth, meal of creation belonging to any who hunger and thirst. Share in the lush life of the earth, take from our planet its gift, feel the embrace in the midst of our changes, touch of communion and God's kiss. Meal of creation, sing all together the song of the earth. Meal of creation, belonging to any who hunger and thirst. Dance with our dear kin of the air, those of the land and the sea. Sing with all species now living and dying. Sound of communion, the world's feast. Meal of creation, Sing all together the song of the earth, meal of creation belonging to any who hunger and thirst. Isn't that a wonderful song? And it makes me think. God had things planned from the beginning of time, from the beginning of creation, and he knew that we would have the Lord's Supper to draw us back again and again and again to the contemplation and thankfulness and celebration of all that Christ did for us on the cross. And so he created 
the things that we use at the communion table at Eucharist for us to celebrate with, including the bread and the wine. Bread from the ripe fields of the land, juice from the grapes of the of divine. Taste of our common story of struggle, taste of communion and new life. Scripture says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father God, we do thank you. Thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to earth for our salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you sacrificed in order that we may live in your grace and forgiveness, fully loved by you. Thank you for leaving us your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the fact that we are a new creation when we live in relationship with you. Amen. And be thankful. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Your creation calls to each and every person. And those of us who know you and love you proclaim again and again your death, your salvation, your gift of eternal life. And we are thankful. Amen. The cup. Jesus, the symbol of Jesus' blood shed for each one of us and be thankful. And now, may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, that we may use them to his glory and the welfare of all people everywhere. Amen. <laughs>